If you asked most people, do they want their lives to be average or just great? Most people would say, well, great. But are they willing to do the work for greatness? I've been reading this amazing book. You may have heard of There's Actually, there's a number of different ones with this main theme, but it's called Chop Wood, Carry Water. Strange title for sure, but it really has the potential for really taking your life and making you really think about the things that you want and then go after them. I'm Coach Maggie with another five-minute Monday Mindset. My husband, um, actually a friend, one of his former um, basketball players, is now a teacher. Thank you, Chelsea Cox. And uh, she texted and said that she and her principal were reading this book. And so uh, she said, it's really inspirational. It's really good and encouraged us to read it. And so my husband and I have been sort of going, the blue is where I'm at. Um, he is the bookmark and he is much further along than I am, but it's an amazing book. I got it at our local library. Uh, shout out to your libraries. Uh, but it's definitely a book that we decided we're going to buy. Uh, as a matter of fact, last night I ordered it and is, have sent it to my three oldest grandkids. Um, but it's really about going through the disciplines of life. We want immediate gratification. As Americans, we everything's instant. You know, we want our food and we want it now. We are discouraged when we don't see the results of our exercise, of our savings plan. Uh, working in a company and we're not getting the raise, we're not getting the promotion because we want everything now. We want the greatness, but we don't want to put in the effort. And the book really goes into the story of a young teenager. I think he's like 18. And I, and honestly, I don't really know all of the background because I've not gotten that far uh, to find it out, but it's just amazing. He goes um, to live in this village so that he could learn how to be a samurai warrior. So it doesn't sound like your everyday story, but it's all of the things that go on there. And he's hoping that as soon as he gets there, they're gonna immediately say, here's your bow and arrow, and we're gonna start training you. But instead, the very first thing he's told that he has to do is chop wood, carry water. And the book goes into that, and I don't wanna give it away, but there's a reason that he tells them to start there. You know, when you are ready to make those changes and you say, all right, this is the year I'm going to get healthy. This is the year I'm going to start a savings plan. This is the year I'm going to go back to school. This is the year I'm going to really work on creating better relationships. Like I said, the first hiccup we come to, the first challenge we come to, we go, eh, when, it's, when we're thinking about do I want to pursue this? Do I really want to work at this relationship? Do I really think our marriage is um, worth salvaging? Do I think it's worth it to keep, you know, going back and going back and trying to get this person to change, to give up this bad habit? When we come upon those challenges, like I said, everything in us says it's not worth it, but it is so worth it. And the key to the greatness, not that we'll stand on a stage, not that books will be written about us, but being all that we were sent here to be. God had a plan for each and every single one of us. And I believe, I believe this with everything in me, that most people die not having reached that, that accomplishment, that assignment. They've not completed it. They don't get to check finish because they still leave with so much in them. And again, in my imagination, I believe most people get to the end of life and go, you mean you had that in store for me? You mean I could have done that? You mean it was up to me? The thing is, we, when it gets hard, we wanna quit. And so this book is talking about the greatness comes in the day to day. Most of us can probably look back to times in our lives and think, oh, wow, you know, those were hard years, those first years of marriage. You know, we struggled, we didn't have much money, but we often look back with fondness and say, remember when, you know, going out was just 
going, you know, for a burger and fries just because we didn't have any money. But sometimes those are the happiest years. Sometimes those were the most challenging, but they were also the most rewarding. Look how many companies get really big and yet they like the notoriety, they like the finances, they like all of that. But they remember the early beginnings of how, you know, all of the employees knew each other and they were one big family. Those were the challenging years, but those were the years that you learned the most, even in just little things. I recorded this video earlier, but guess what? There was no sound because it was on mute. I didn't know that. And so often with the challenges come the frustration. What's going on? Only to go, oh, so then I had to do it again. But you know what? Hopefully there are things I thought of that I didn't say the first time. Let's look at those mistakes, those challenges as an opportunity. What can I gain from them? Sometimes not a lot, but look how often we can say, okay, I learned something. I learned something about myself. You get fired from a job, what can you learn from that? You get passed over for a promotion, what can I learn from that? Someone says something mean and hurtful, our immediate thought is to retaliate. But what can I learn from that? Was there something on my part that I should have done differently? We're not excusing their rudeness, but is there something that I could have done differently? So let's take those opportunities. I told my husband yesterday, because right now we're both grabbing the book. And when he sets it down and goes off and does something, I pick it up and then I read a chapter. And that's the other beauty. The chapters are like, three pages, two pages, four most. So it's a super easy book to read. But I told my husband yesterday, I said, you know, we need to really say that to each other. Let's make this day a process towards greatness. What did you, and at the end of the day, what did you do to move you closer to greatness? Again, this is not that we're trying to be something more than what we were meant to be. We're just living to be the best and the greatest that God intended for us to be. So again, check it out, read reviews. Uh, like I said, check it out at your library, but it is an amazing book. There's only probably, it was 120 pages, seriously. You could actually read it in a couple of days, but I encourage you to read it slow and think about what are things you can do. And even the very last part, they it looks like they're gonna go into that because like so often we get inspired, like a good movie. But then we, walk, we leave the theater and guess what? We're like, it doesn't change us. But I think in here they're saying, they're wanting us to not only read it, be inspired, but put these things into practice. Are we willing to be just average? Or do we want greatness? That's the best God intended for us. I know what I want, and I hope that's what you want too. So check it out. I'll put a link to the book and um, come back the rest of the week because I want to work on my greatness and help you to walk in your greatness, improving your health, living the best. Because when our health is not what it should be, it's hard to live greatness. So take care. And as always, God bless.